Welcome back guys. Today I'm here to tell you all about waterproofing your winter gear. Stay tuned. Waterproofing your gear is really important. You know, when your gear gets wet, you get cold and then hypothermia sets in. So today I'm going to talk about a few topics related to waterproofing your gear. The first one is going to be learning how to make your own Greenland wax. So what's Greenland wax? Well, Greenland wax is a mixture of paraffin wax and beeswax. Beeswax you can get at a health food store or from your local honeybee farmer and paraffin wax I just got at my local home hardware store and you can use it you can find it anywhere basically where people do a lot of canning and arts and crafts so Greenland wax is really awesome it obviously is a, it's a heavy wax it's natural and you can use it to waterproof your garments today I'm going to use it to waterproof my new Fall Raven uh, G1000 fabric on my Fall Raven trousers I've washed that fabric a few times and the original Greenland wax has washed out and I'm also going to use it on my anorak that I made last year. Let's go to the kitchen now and I'll show you how to make this amazing waterproofer. I have the double boiler all fired up here in the kitchen and now I'm going to add the ingredients for the Greenland wax. The recipe calls for nine parts paraffin wax to one part beeswax. So since the packaging um, for the paraffin wax from my local hardware store comes in 450 grams, I'm going to use 50 grams of beeswax. And we're just going to weigh that out and yeah, it's about 52 grams. That's close enough for me. I'm using the double boiler here so I don't scald anything as I'm making it. And you can use like a regular pot with like a metal dish uh, inserted. First off, I'm going to melt the paraffin wax. So I'm going to put 450 grams of the paraffin in here and we'll list, let that melt for a bit. With the paraffin melted, now I'll add the beeswax. Well, it's all melted. I'm just going to give it a quick stir to mix it up. Pour it into a Pyrex measuring cup or pitcher and we'll uh, spoon it out into our baking dish to make the Greenland wax. All right, so now we're going to pour it into my little muffin tin, just like I did when I made those fire starters. So I've got a large muffin tin and a smaller one as well. The large ones will be for doing larger garments, the small ones I'll keep in my pack for quick touch-ups. So as you can see, out of one package of paraffin wax, which is 450 grams, and 50 grams of beeswax, I end up with six large muffin tin sized pucks of the Greenland wax and 12 of the small little ones that you can kind of keep in your pack. You're going to want to leave these to cool now for a few hours until they're solid all the way through. If you want to speed the process, you can stick it in the refrigerator. The Greenland wax turned out really well. Make sure to store it in a cool, dry place. You don't want it melting on you. One awesome thing about Greenland wax is it waterproofs and it extends the durability of your garment. Another cool application for Greenland wax is actually making covers for you know, your fruit and veggies for in the fridge. Say, you know, you cut up uh, a pepper and you want to store it in the fridge and you put it in a bowl and cover it in plastic wrap. Well, instead of using plastic wrap, what you can do is, you know, make a circular piece of fabric and impregnate it with Greenland wax and then cover your, you know, your food. It's a safe way to cover your food to keep the humidity in the bowl and uh, it's a natural product. So you don't have to worry about plastics going into the environment. You know, Greenland wax breaks down and so does the cotton. Let's waterproof the anorak and my Fall Raven trousers. Today I'm going to re-waterproof my Fall Raven pants. And uh, these pants are awesome, but they are originally impregnated with the Greenland wax on the G1000 fabric. And the G1000 is a, a polyester cotton blend. So once you wash these pants two to three times, especially if you're washing them in warm water, the Greenland wax basically the beeswax and paraffin, of course, is going to melt and wash away. So it's a nice natural product, but it does mean that you have to maintain your garments. So before we start, we want to make sure that our, our pants are clean. So have gone through the wash and that goes the same with any garment that you're going to be uh, using the wax with. One thing to remember about Greenland wax is that it does compromise the breathability of your garment. So for my Fall Raven pants, I'll just be doing the knees below the knee and the seat area um, because those are areas that are most likely to get damp or wet when I'm in the field. For the anorak, when I'm going to waterproof that one with the wax, what I'll be doing is the hood, the shoulders, uh, probably the elbows down and then uh, maybe the pocket area in the front and the seat because you know when you're sitting by the fire that area tends to get quite wet. 
So you have your little Greenland wax and what you're going to do on the areas that you want to waterproof is work it along the fabric in different directions. And you'll see it'll kind of go on a bit whitish. And don't be alarmed, we'll fix that in a jiffy, but go in all different directions just so that you are um, really getting it into the weave of the fabric. It doesn't really take long to do this. Make sure you get into all the little wrinkles there. Also going to go down the leg. The next step is to heat the garment. I'm going to use a hair dryer. You could also use an iron on the low or medium setting, but make sure you do not turn on the steam. Be sure to clean the surface of the iron between garments and using it for something else or you'll end up with wax all over a garment you may not have wanted to waterproof. In the field, you can gently hold your clothes next to a warm fire or next to a warm stove uh, to impregnate the fabric with Greenland wax. How you know that the Greenland wax is now in the fabric is that it looks nice and like normal fabric. Whereas on this side, as you can see, I haven't worked on this side yet and you can see the, uh, the beeswax and paraffin still sitting on the surface. When it's done, it should look just like the original garment. When you complete the whole garment, make sure you let it cure for a bit as it, uh, it will solidify within the fibers of the fabric. And then you can do a water repellency test by sprinkling some water on the surface. If you'd like to put another coat, you can do so once it's uh, completely dried and hardened within the fabric. Now that the Greenland wax is cured, again, you can speed that up by putting it, you know, outside if it's cold or in the fridge or freezer, or just letting it sit at room temperature for a little while. Let's give it a test and see if it worked. Oh yeah, look at that. Beating right up. Perfect. Now it should basically roll right off your fabric. Awesome. Next is on to waterproof the anorak. I'll do it exactly the same way as I did the pants in the regions that I talked about earlier. Remember your wax will wash out after about two to three washes, especially in warm water. So caring for your garments, if you want to extend the life of your waxing, uh, is to basically wash it in cold and tumble dry on low. But remembering that the wax may provide a light coating within your dryer, so be aware of that. The other option is to wash in cold and then hang to dry. Be sure to test the water repellency of your gear frequently in the field by doing the splash test that I showed you earlier. That way you know if you need to use touch-ups. And if you make the little project shown in this video, you have one of these little guys around in your pack to do the touch-ups as required. If this little project isn't for you and you want to uh, get your own Greenland wax quickly, you can do so by purchasing it from my, uh, my online store on my website. It links you to the Canadian and American Amazon sites where you can buy it from Fall Raven. As you know, I made these mukluks a few weeks ago and now I want to waterproof the soles of them and make them more durable. So what I'm going to do now is add a really durable sole to it and waterproof it. So when we're um, going to be waterproofing the mukluks, what I want to do is tape off the edge of the shoe with some duct tape. You want to make sure you're working with a clean leather surface beforehand. We're going to tape off the area you do not want covered in your weatherproofing and your sole. And then we're going to rough the surface up with a little bit of sandpaper. 220 grit. Next I have uh, rubber dust which I made yesterday by using an angle grinder with a wire um, brush attachment to take off some rubber. So that's going to get mixed in this little bowl right here with a bit of shoe goo. So uh, Ugh, it's this stuff right here. The back blew out of it, so I'm going to put it in here. So then you mix it up. You'll need a fair amount. This container kind of totally blew up on me. And then we'll just paint it on the bottom of the shoe. And at the end, it's going to look something like that. Okay, you can see right there and you'll peel the tape off after and it'll be a nice rubberized waterproof sole. So mix it in really, really well. It's very thick stuff. You don't need a whole lot of it, but just enough to create a nice layer at the bottom. 
you probably need a bit more shoe goo compared to the rubber. And then basically you're going to take your shoe and you're just going to kind of paint it on like that with like a tongue depressor. And that's it. Easy peasy. That's going to provide a waterproof sole for you with some grip and reduce the wear on the leather of your moccasins. And then when you're done, you let it cure for several hours. You can put another layer on there or just straight shoe goo on top and then peel off your barrier there. You'll have a great sole. So it's a bit of an art to get it on here. It looks a bit messy at first, but you'll just kind of keep filling in the areas as you go along. Well, we're inside sometime later and you can see the mucklock here. I've removed the tape and underneath is the mixture of the rubber dust and uh, the shoe goo. You can also use contact cement, it's kind of the same idea. So you can see how it's a thick, rubbery, rough coating. That's going to give you good traction, but most importantly the waterproofing for the bottom of the sole as well as uh, it'll reduce the wear on the leather. So this is something that you should do for your outdoor moccasins. Uh, definitely gives you some more durability and a bit more waterproofing. First for the leather, I like to sort of condition it and keep it nice and clean. So you can use the saddle soap. I also have the Dr. Martin's uh, Wonder Balsam. I believe it's made of sort of beeswax, lanolin, and also has coconut oil in there as well. So it kind of conditions the leather. So put a couple coats of that on there and then as well you can put a bit of mink oil on as well to add some more water repellency to it. The other one does have it as well, so uh, it's your choice if you want to kind of add more to it, but I think I will for this pair. As for the canvas part of it, um, you can certainly use Greenland Wax. I also have this durable waterproofing spray. Uh, you can use it for rain gear, tents and other things like that. So I'll be spraying sort of the canvas part of the boot and uh, all along here obviously. I want to shield the leather though. You do not want to get that sprayed all over the leather. Uh, and of course with any product, make sure you test it in a small inconspicuous area just in case uh, it causes a coloration issue or um, causes an issue with the leather. Uh, it will certainly cause the leather, um, you know, the mink oil as well as the, uh, you know, saddle soap. It's going to cause your uh, leather to kind of golden up a little bit. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. The last topic I want to cover today is waterproofing uh, your down gear. Here's a, a down jacket that I've had for a long time. And you know, you want to do it really easily. It's, it's a big, long garment. I don't have time to basically use the Greenland wax on it. And there are specific requirements, you know, for using Greenland wax on a down product. Especially you got to be really careful. You don't want to be using an iron. So today we're going to do this really quickly using a product by Nick Wax. Uh, they have a full lineup of products that you can see here from the Cabela's website. So you can go online to Cabela's uh, to order this product. It's really easy. You need this product, a front end loader, wash machine, and when you dry it, uh, you're gonna need a couple of tennis balls as well. So let's start waterproofing my down jacket. So we're in the laundry room now, and I'm gonna use my front loading washer to waterproof my down coat. Really important to use a front loader. Uh, they don't have an agitator. As you can see in here, there's no agitator. The agitator would really wreck uh, you know, clothing uh, or sleeping bags for that matter that are full of down that you want to re-waterproof. I'm gonna put my coat in there now. And you wanna make sure your coat is relatively clean. Use one of the other Nick Wax products or the like uh, to clean it. I'm gonna put the recommended amount of the Nick Wax downproof in the machine. Follow the directions carefully and then basically you're gonna add your downwash product there as per the label. Close that and I'm actually going to kind of put it on delicate there and on warm and we're going to let it go. The wash is done. So the down waterproofing is in using the Nick Wax waterproofer and you can kind of smell it on the fabric. Just gonna put it in the dryer now. How am I gonna keep my down garment all nice and fluffy? Well, I'm gonna add three tennis balls to the dryer drum and I'm gonna tumble dry on low. And then my garment will be all ready. Periodically, you should check it, take it out, fluff it up and start the dryer again. I'm gonna set it to low and allow it to tumble dry. Right, the dryer stopped. I'm going to check on the jacket. Right on. It is ready, all puffed up and waterproofed. Bring on winter. 
Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, have a great week. Take care.